uh, she travels all over the United States. She has several amazing people that are on her board that are, you know, Patricia King, Jane Hammond, Bishop Hammond, Becca Greenwood, all these people that, and especially Bishop Hammond that you submit to. And, you know, so I've, I've grown to love Elizabeth. I, I watch her life, you know, because then the spirit of smack will come on me if I have to strain her out. But, you know, she... Um, she carries a lot and she's she you know she's a youngin and she in her young years has really grown in the lord and really has tremendous amount of wisdom and favor so i'd like you to open up your hearts to receive the word of the lord and and be blessed we love you thank you so much it's so good to be back here king of kings and you know, one of the things I love, um, I love when I find true shepherds and true pastors. And so, Pastors Peter and Tricia, I hear them talk about you guys and the love they have for you. Like, surround them and always back them up. I'm telling you, I've gone places you, that don't have that. Their congregations don't have that kind of heart. They would give it all for you. They have given it all to build this. And so, I always tell people, when you have those type of pastors in your life, surround them. Ask them, what can I do? How can I serve you and your vision that God's given you for here? You know, sometimes, sometimes the church world thinks it's, and they don't know I'm saying any of this, but sometimes, and not here because you guys wouldn't do this, but sometimes the church world comes in wanting, give me, give me, give me. Do we know anyone like that? And so, like, it's so wonderful to be able to surround the vision that God's given uh, uh, pastors and say, um, you know, how can I serve that vision and help you help it come to pass? So I want to encourage people to do that. You know, it's really good to um, be involved that way. But um, there's a little bit of ringing. You hear that? Well, Peter's back. Is there a little bit of ringing or is it me? Okay. It's just me. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, I wanted to... Um, share before I start, um, I started this thing, um, we need to keep praying for our nation. Amen. We need to bless our leaders. We need to pray for our leaders. Um, those are commands in the Bible, right? So this is still the only truth, not our feelings. This is the only truth. Um, and so, so like in the middle of this, I, um, the Lord spoke to me to start doing an event called We Prophesy. So if you guys follow any of the things we do, um, we go to different regions of the USA, um, and we, uh, I take a group of prophets. We just went into Southern California, and the Lord told me one Sunday morning, you need to go to Southern California. The enemy's trying to close up some things, and you need to um, take the prophets and go prophesy into that thing. So we had, um, of course, my pastor, Patricia King. We had um, Becca Greenwood. We had all these prophets, young and old, that came with us. Older, not old, but older. And uh, they came with us into Southern California. We just prophesied into that. That thing just broke open within the first hour, and we just kept prophesying into it. Do you see Southern? Do you see California is changing now? Like I'm telling you, prayer and the prophetic works. So don't let the enemy make you guys think the prayer doesn't work. Prayer works. So. So we've been traveling doing that, and we're planning on hopefully coming here before the end of the year. So you guys come to that. Um, I, before I start, I wanted to talk about um, ages and stages. I feel like the Lord has told me before I start preaching to share this, because I want to encourage people that in your older years, that you should be rocking where you're at. Like, don't let the enemy get in your ears. So... I want to talk about ages and stages really quick. I'm going to say it in ages, but I want you to hear it in stages also. So in your 20s, say like just in general, in your 20s, you go running, doing everything. And like the Lord lets you do it because he's building relationship with you. So you become like really confident. You ever see those like 20-year-olds that are like, they feel like they can do everything in the world. Like they are not weak in any area of their life. In your 30s, you go through the dark night of your soul. That's all of us. I don't know about you, but I've gone through. I was like, can people have three dark nights? No, I'm just kidding. But um, you go through the dark night. And this is where some people fall off because they think that God has left them. And they go through really a hard season. And I, I want to tell people, be encouraged and not, don't leave the Lord in those seasons. Um, and then when you get, if you, if you, because God is like, I'm, what he's trying to do in that, in your 30s, he's trying to get you out of you. Because what, what he's trying to do is make you all he needs you to be. 
And so we think we, when we're in our 20s, we think, oh, man, we totally are submitted to the Lord. But when you go through your 30s and you start dying, I know that doesn't get preached a lot, but like God kills you. He wants to kill inside of you. He thinks you're amazing, but he needs to kill some of that flesh in you. And so in the 30s, that's what it does. And then now I'm talking ages, but this could be stages. Now, in your 40s, now you go, God, I'm not going to do anything unless you tell me to. You ever get there? You're like, people try to ask you stuff, and you're like, you know, I'm good. The Lord didn't tell me to do that. So when you're in your 20s, you do everything. You run all over the place. You do everything possible. Now you've hit 50, and this is where the convergence of all of those things come back, all the things that God has processed through you. I know process isn't the greatest word people like to hear, but it is a process. God's trying to make you who he needs you to be. And as soon you hit 50, you should be in the greatest days of your life. But what the enemies try to come in is like we hear, oh, you're going downhill. You need to do the, all these things. And so you should have the greatest amount of money. You should have the greatest. All those things um, happen. So I just want to encourage, if you're 50, I won't ask. Who over here is over 50? I'm not looking at Trisha. I'm not asking who's over 50. So, <laughs> so, um, so you should be in the greatest days. You should be dreaming your biggest dreams ahead. If you're 70, you should be living your greatest life. And I want to encourage people, take on that. That's really what God's saying. Look to the next generation and teach them those things you've learned. And run with them and help them in that. So I just wanted to share a little bit on that. I hope you're encouraged with that because the Lord really wants to encourage people. If you're 50 or older, you need to learn that, that God has your greatest days in front of you. It's not the 20-year-olds. It's the 50-year-olds. Okay. So I, uh, last week I was just, I want to say about hunger. Um, I, I know I'm just giving a little preface before I speak, but God, I, I've just, I feel it even in this area, such an increased hunger that's going on. God is going to move, like I can feel it's all that reformation anointing that I always feel when I'm in this area. And, um, and I was just in a church in Fort Walton Beach, it's a Southern Baptist church, <laughs> last Sunday, and I went up to preach and I kind of had some words of knowledge and I started saying the words of knowledge, weeping breaks out. Like, not in one section, the whole sanctuary. Like, weeping breaks out. And I'm like, okay, this is like a Southern Baptist church, right? So, so like, I'm like, weeping breaks out. People are so hungry for God. They're so hungry for God. It doesn't matter about denominations anymore. They're so hungry for God. And I get up, and then, like, I'm thinking, like, I need to, like, this glory comes in, right, in the building. I feel like this angelic activity comes in. And I'm like, God is, like, healing hearts. Like, there was this healing anointing that came in. And then I'm like, well, maybe I should transition because most people, pastors want you to preach. And the pastor walks up, and he goes, no, we're going to let God move. It was so beautiful. These guys are so hungry for God. And so let, you know, in your time, I feel like God's going to have some encounters with some of you in here and your home. Like God's going to encounter you in your home. Give him room to move. Get in the word. Like turn off the media. Turn off, turn off the news. This is good news. This is what we should be getting. I'm telling you, I feel like God is going to, I can feel it in the room here. The God, there's some of you are going to have such incredible encounters. And they were talking about miracles. Some of you are going to start laying hands. You didn't even believe God could use you in that way. And miracles are going to start breaking out. So, I, man, I just feel there's such an anointing on that. So, so now I just want to get in. I want to talk about my hope is built on nothing less. So. A couple weeks ago, I woke up, and I heard this song. The next generation, some of the next generation, do, they don't know this song, but it's called On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. And I want to read the, some of the lyrics to this song to start today and share what God wants to say to you. Because this is a really encouraging message that God wants to encourage you. Um, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other grounds is sinking sand. All our fears in this season, all the whatever's, whatever that is for you, those things are sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. 
When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. What stormy, what stormy gale has come over your life in this season or try to come over? My anchor holds, anchor, my anchor, all of this that God's done in me, my anchor, he's my anchor, holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood supports me in the whelming flood. Do we remember or do we let our fear dictate what's going on in our lives? Or is it his oath and we're remembering his covenant and his blood during those times? His blood covers our families. His blood keeps us. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. I've had my soul feel like it's, it's going to give way. I had to remember him. I had to remember him in those moments. In this past season, even the season we're still in as a church, when all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. Here's what the word hope means in the, in the dictionary. A feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. The Lord showed me that there are, certain, there are people that can have ten things in your life and nine of those things you have faith for. And that one thing you've been believing God for, you've covered and you're like, Lord, I'm not going to believe you for that anymore. I don't even have faith in that area anymore. I've lost hope. And the Lord wants to encourage you to say today, hope again. Right. Hope again in that. Right. Here's what Proverbs 13, 12 says. Hope defers makes the heart sick. Right. We've all heard this. Here's actually what, in the Hebrew, here's what the word deferred means. To drag along. Have you been believing for something you feel like your heart's been dragged along? Like you don't even want to hope for it again. And God is saying, hope again, hope again. Here's hope deferred makes a heart sick. The actual word sick means weak. It means it, your hope being dragged along makes your heart weak. But God wants to encourage you today. I'm telling you, I heard the Lord said, hope again, hope again, hope again. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. The word here is a Greek word. It's called kava. It means to wait, to twist, to stretch, then of tension, of enduring and waiting. Have you been like when you're waiting for God's plans in your life, do you feel like you're being, the, there's a tension in your life? Do you feel like a stretching and a waiting and a twisting? And you're like, God, are you ever going to fulfill this? I feel like my life is like crazy. And the Lord said, oh, Oh, if you even knew the plans I have for you. He wants you to hope again. He wants you to hope again. Yeah. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in God. Christopher, Christopher Reeves, you guys know Christopher Reeves, gone now. Um, but he was Superman back in the early days. He said, once you choose hope, anything's possible. That's, that's huge. Once you choose hope, anything's possible. Emily Dickinson said this, I dwell in possibility. What if we could live there again in the thing? What is it? Do you have your kids need to be saved? Do you need like a financial breakthrough? Whatever it is that somehow you have lost hope in that one area. You don't want to tell people I'm a Christian and I, don't, I have unbelief in that area. That one thing. God, I believe you for all these other things. But that one thing, I'm going to be like this and I don't believe you anymore in it. God loves when you can come and be personal with him. He loves when you can be honest and say, you know what? Um, help my unbelief. I don't believe anymore. I've been hurt. My heart's been, my hope has been dragged along in that area. My heart's weak in that area. Like, will you really do it? Nelson Mandela said, may your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. Dale Carnegie says, most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. Amen. Can you go across that today? Can you believe for God? And I actually heard the Lord during worship today when uh, Pastor Peter was singing, I heard the Lord said, decree hope again. When you go home, the Lord wants you to go home and decree hope again yes. over your life. 
Maya Angelou said this, you will face many fears in your life, but never let yourself be defeated. Have we let ourselves be defeated in that one area? We don't believe God again. We'll say, God, you know, I've been praying for this for 20 years, and I just don't know. My heart's being dragged along, and my heart's sick. Lamentations 3.24 says, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will hope in him. Can we hope again? The Lord is saying, he said, decree hope again. Decree hope over your situation. Do you need a breakthrough in your job? Decree hope again because you're like, I'll never get that raise. I'll never, God will never do that for me. He could do that for sister. And you're jealous over your brother that just got promoted. But God's like, I'm trying to get to that part of your heart that you've locked off for me. And I need you to let me in. Romans, Romans 15, 4 says, because I want to give you guys a lot of scripture on this. Romans 15, 4 says, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we may, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We just need to make sure we're getting in this. You know, we come with our feelings. I'm just telling you. My generation, we really, I'm like, can we just get away from our feelings for a second? Can we come in? I want you to tell me that God said that. We go, I'm telling you, like some of the stuff we're battling in our generation in the church is because we go, we feel this. We feel that. No, I mean, like, are we walking in love? Are we like, are we walking in faith? Like, we know how to do a lot of worship. We know how to do a lot of worship, but we can't even memorize the word of God. And I'm telling you, I want to challenge, like, people to memorize the word of God. Because how do you go through this world? How do you hope again when you don't even know, like, the anchor of our hope? And so in that, here's Romans 12, 12, 12, 12. And this is where I want to stick for a little bit. Romans 12, 12 says this. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue steadfastly in prayer. I want to break this down. Here's, here's the Greek translation for this. Rejoicing in hope. Hope in this scripture means expectation of what is certain. What is it you've been believing God for you need God to do? God wants to partner with you. And I'm telling you, I hear hope again. So patient in tribulation. Patient means to endure, to stand your ground. Show endurance, bear up under, and persevere. Stand your ground, show endurance. God, help us. What does it look like to stand up under the thing we're believing for, to show endurance? This is what God's looking for. Remember, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. And then number three is continuing steadfast in prayer. St and steadfastly in the Greek, it means to staying in a fixed direction, prevailing strength, consistently showing strength which prevails. That means that when you feel like giving up or you get, I don't know, I've done this before where you're like, God, I just, like you're crying. You're like, I shouldn't feel like despaired in this area of my life. Um, but you feel despaired. And he's like, this is what he's trying to say. Stay in a fixed direction. Yeah. We're not supposed to look to the left or the right. Stay like God, you said. There's something about somebody that can be persistent with the Lord that it doesn't mean you don't have your crying season, but you get up, dust yourself off, and say, okay, I'm staying in a fixed direction for the Lord. Like, I'm going to believe, he said, I, you said my children will be saved, me and my household will serve the Lord. Like, I'm staying in a fixed direction. And there's something about that that God attaches himself to. It's kind of like if you have children and they, they always remind you, like, hey, you said you're going to take us to Disney World. Do you ever notice when it's like something like that kids never forget? They, they can wake up at 6 a.m. and tell you, you said you'd take us to Disney World. They will follow you around and talk about that because they are steadfast and they're fixed on something you told them. Maybe we should take some of that childlikeness and take yeah. it on. Maybe that area, I don't know what it is for each of you. Everybody, it's going to be different. But what is it that God needs you to be, to be stayed in a fixed direction? 
in this season. I'm telling you, God wants to encourage you. He wants to encourage you in this season. Uh, Desmond Tutu said this, hope is being able to see that there is light despite, of all, de- despite all the darkness. Can you stand there and the enemy's in your ear and he's yelling at you and he's telling you that'll never change. We've taken that on and we go, that'll never change. It's like somehow the voice of the enemy has become our, our God. We don't mean it to be, but we end up doing that. Oh, that'll never change over my son. That'll never change over my daughter. That'll never change over my city. Do you know we were trying to do city transformation? And how many people, like, how many people actually believe your city can actually be changed? We go, yeah, yeah, but okay. So what does that mean to you? What's your part in making it change? God wants us to be stayed in a fixed direction, prevailing in strength. What about, what about the next generation? What are we teaching them when we have fear all over us and we're not walking in faith? They need to see this faith. They need to see it. Do you know the next generation, the, the harvest that's coming in, if they're seeing us freaked out as the world is freaked out, why would they come and stay in church? They need to know the God that you know that's full of faith, that you're like, I'm, fixed, I'm set in a fixed direction. God's going to come through for me. And then all of a sudden, your faith, because it's without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so when your faith is attached to that and they start seeing it, then they go, oh, well, I want to believe that God. Right. Like, he changed that stuff for me. He'll change it for you. But we, can I be honest with you guys? We act just like the world sometimes. I got to check my heart. And I have to say, you know, like, Lord, like, am I in, I'm in the word? Like, nobody's there. But we're, we can all encourage people, like, if we hear someone talking fear, if we hear somebody talking things that maybe are not biblical, we'll say, you know, hey, maybe I can join my faith with yours. Let me believe with you. You don't have to put them down, but let, let's believe together. We can join and say, let's be the body. I'm telling you, when the harvest comes in and God, people come in, they'll be like, you know, like, I want to have that. I need it in my family. I need to believe again. But what are we on our jobs? What does that look like? Do people know we have hope in God? Are we freaking out the same way they are? I don't know why I'm on this, but I'm just telling you, there's something about this in this area that you guys have to shift, shift the atmosphere. And I heard the Lord when he was talking um, during worship, um, I heard say, the Lord say, tell the intercessors to decree hope over this area, to decree hope over this area. I'm telling you, some of the fear that's based in this area, um, I actually was in November, I was in Philadelphia, and I, I flew into Philadelphia, and sometimes when I go into a city, the Lord will be like this you know, just kind of comes out, but I I felt like there was a spirit of chaos over Philadelphia, and so the Lord had me just decree some things over it, and what it does is when you as the ecclesia, as intercessors come, and you decree that thing over it, I'm telling you, when the Lord said, tell the intercessors to decree hope over this area, some of that stuff is going to be broken. So what does it look like for a hope-filled church impacting a whole city? What does it look like for a hope-filled church impacting your job? What is it that God has you on your job, the exact same job in this moment? It's not for you to feel like God is failing. It's for you to show the world that your God is the only thing that creates hope in this season. And so God is wanting us to be a light. And there's a hunger that's attached to that. It's a hunger like, God, I want to know you even greater in this season. I don't know what's going on, but let me be a light wherever you've put me. Let me be a light in, I don't think y'all have Walmart here, do you? Like, I don't think, okay. I think Trisha usually has to drive me to a different city for it, right? So, so in the middle of this, like different places you go, like ask the Lord to be your light. What is the hope? What is it that you can create? What is it? Everybody has a mantle that you carry. And in that, when you go in places, like when I take the prophets I do into We Prophesy, it's not necessarily about what they're prophesying. That is important. But it's their mantles coming in together. And when we're unified, and we're, our team is usually pretty unified. We honor each other and love each other. And um, when we all come together as all these different streams as prophets, we come in there, all our mantles together, and we shift that atmosphere. Look at California right now. We, now, we weren't the only ones. There were tons of people praying in California, so don't get me wrong. We just came in there and did our job. 
you know, we came and we said, okay, all our mantles together. There are no superstars. There are no celebrities. All our mantles together. Let's break that thing open that God wants to. And in the middle of that. So what does it look like for a hope-filled church in this area to come and say, hey, like suicides are down. Do you know, like, I don't know if any of you guys have battled the spirit of suicide. Um, in Southern California, there's a really strong spirit of suicide. I, I don't know what that is from, but um, whenever I go in there, I can feel it. But um, what does it look like for your neighbors to say, hey, you know, I lost, I didn't know I lost hope I was going to commit suicide, but somebody got a word from the Lord, my neighbor that's you, got a word from the Lord, and you were able to go that. Are we caught up in all, all the things in our lives that we don't even see our neighbor, and we can give them hope again? We can lead them to the Lord. We can show them what Christ is. This is a moment for the church to shine. It's all hands on deck in this season. And so, so I really, like, really feel like God said hope again for this area. Hope again, hope again, decree hope again. And I actually would love to pray. Um, I don't know if this is okay, Tricia, um, uh, Pastor uh, Peter. Um, I really felt like we should pray, like, for some people here that feel um, you've lost hope in an area, be honest. I, I mean, I do sometimes. Like, I, I need God to come and touch that area of my life. And being honest with the Lord about those areas is it's so, it's so good for us to do that and be honest about what we're going through. And so I just felt like there was something here. I mean, I feel angelic presence here. Like, God's going to do something for you today. Like, hope again. Hope again, right? Your neighbors need to feel hope again. Like, your city needs to feel hope again. Do you guys know people that, like, are freaking out? How many people know people are freaking out in this area? Are you freaking out in this area? You know, I'm kidding. But, um, but hope again. And so, Lord, we decree hope again in this area. We decree in Baskin Ridge, Lord, not one life would be taken, Lord, because they've lost hope in this season. Lord, we pray we release angelic activity in this area, Lord, even into New York City and the surrounding area. Areas. Lord, we stand in the gap as the ecclesia, and we decree hope again. We decree hope again. Lord, I even, wow, I even see a young, young kid trying to take its life. And Lord, we decree hope again, and the powers of that be broken in the name of Jesus. That spirit of death will be broken in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray over families and their finances in this area. Lord, we decree hope again over those finances. It's like a spirit of despair. Wow, I see it. It's a spirit of despair. Lord, we break and bind the powers of that operating. Wow. Lord, we decree hope again. We decree it. Trisha, can you come up here and pray? Can you guys... Do y'all feel that? God's stirring up some intercession. Go ahead and pray. Like, uh, if you are battling, this isn't to shame anybody, but if you are, just come up. We love you. Come We're going to pray and stand in agreement with you to pray over you, okay? So, Lord, we do. We take authority over all. Despair, all premi yeah, uh, premature fear of premature wow. death and destruction. We break your assignment in Jesus' name. And we lose hope. We lose breakthrough. We lose the joy of the Lord because joy is our strength. And so, God, we speak to all areas where the enemy is trying to take you out through depression, which works with hopelessness and despair. And we bind you yeah. in, and we render you ineffective and powerless. Yeah. So for some of you, if you're, uh, that's on our prayer team, if, if you're willing to come up and pray, uh, Linnell and Carolyn and Easter, 
Um, you know, let's do that. So, Lord, again, we just thank you for joy. That hopelessness, we, yeah, said. Come yeah, on. Yeah. So, Lord, we just thank you that joy takes out the hopelessness. And so, God, we just thank you for healing right now in Jesus' name. So those Lord, of you in your seats, stretch your hand towards these folks, okay? There's power in agreement. Yeah. Okay, Linda, you can pray, too, if you want. You know, God is good. And Jesus came to, to give his life more abundantly. The Bible says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we're going to break off the assignment of the enemy that is trying to break, cause uh, that thievery to take place, that's stealing our joy. He's under our feet. So, Lord, again, we just thank you. We know that situations have come and have caused despair, but, God, you are greater. You are greater than anything. Father, and you're the God of turnaround, and we decree the suddenlies of the Lord in Jesus' name. He is, you know, one of my favorite scriptures is in Luke 137, and it says, with God, absolutely nothing shall be called impossible so god we break off the limitations father where we've been afraid where we have limited you and try to understand through our limited mindset father forgive us but lord we thank you that you are the great i am you are the alpha and the omega you are the beginning and the end and you know the end from the beginning so lord we thank you that you're not in our time frame and we call the future into the now and we call forth the suddenlies of the lord in jesus name i actually saw someone you haven't told anyone but you you may be watching online or here i don't know um i feel like you have been wanting to commit suicide and this message is for you I don't know what is up with it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. God loves you. God loves you and he wants to encourage you today. Hope again. And, and even here, if anyone has thought you're better off dead than alive, we take authority wow. over that. That is not the spirit of the Lord speaking. That is the enemy. Yeah. And so, Lord, you said that you, have, you will bless us abundantly. And I know you may be going through tough times. But God has a way, and he'll turn that thing around. But just keep your eyes fixed on him. So several months ago, I had a vision, and the Lord was showing me Two, two spirits tormenting people and I knew that the spirits represented hopelessness and disappointment and then I saw the, a lion the size of this room the size of this chapel and I knew that it was the lion of the tribe of Judah yeah. show up and it came in devoured yeah. it came in devoured the two spirits and then it began to roar and as it began to roar I looked over and it was speaking and I, I looked over and, and, and I saw a wall and plaques started to appear, golden plaques with fine uh, detail on them. And then he said, go over and look at the plaques and see what I'm saying. Because as he was roaring, he was speaking. And then a word started to appear. And it was what the Lion of the tribe of Judah is speaking over you as he's conquering and defeating and, def and devouring hopelessness. And so make that decree. That's what he said. As I'm speaking over you, now you begin to speak it. And so what is the Lord speaking over you? He's speaking hope. He's speaking life. He's speaking resurrection and power. He's speaking healing and health and wholeness. He's speaking all these things over you. So just right now, just, just begin to decree and declare yeah. these things over yourself. As hopelessness, despair, and disappointment is being devoured yeah. by the Spirit of the Lord, decree life. And so, Father, we just decree supernatural life over our families, Lord. We decree resurrection power over our health, Father, over our bodies, over every situation, Lord, over relationships, Lord. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that hopelessness and despair and disappointment is being devoured, is being devoured right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your power and the roar of the Lion of the tribe of Judah in Jesus' name. And lastly, uh, before we, are you going to preach a little more? You're done. All right. What I saw over people. And I want you to do a prophetic act, even over yourself, your family. Um, I just saw, like, 
you, you know like when you're going to get an x-ray and they put that heavy thing on you um, I saw like the enemy placing that garment of heaviness that garment of weariness and despair right. on on some of you and the Lord is saying by faith and what happens is you know like sometimes if you're holding on to your arm you know or someone's holding you don't realize that the hand is there any longer you just so the Lord is saying for some you don't even realize it's there right because it's been so long you've been going through it so mm -hmm. prophetically I just want you to just remove you know that 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 shroud off of you break it off you know like that woman at the well you know or that that the blind beggar he just he threw his garment off that represented his blindness and he went and ran he received his healing so by faith Lord we just remove the garments of heaviness right now in Jesus name and Lord we say that we are a people of praise we are joy remember joy has nothing to do with your situation it's a, it's a choice to rejoice. Because I tell you, I've been in stinky places of despair and depression, but it's when I focus and I'm like, Lord, ha, 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 like I'm not like into this thing, you know? And then, and then it's like this, by faith, this joy rises up in me. It's a weapon against the enemy. So Lord, we just thank you for joy. And we lose supernatural joy. We say the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Lord, our eyes are fixed on you, not on what the enemy is saying. we got to shift direction because the enemy wants us to be focused on only what he's saying, which causes despair and hopelessness and defeat. So God, we just receive it. And we thank you for your supernatural presence, for your angelic help that's here, for Holy Spirit's brooding presence. And here's the last thing I'm going to say. The Holy Spirit is saying, this is your season to give birth that he is implanting as you're meditating upon the word and in his presence he is giving seed to you where you're going to birth new you may say I don't know how don't worry about it it's not your problem he's saying yield and surrender because we are God is breaking off barrenness and he's causing us to birth the new birth the new paths birth vision birth revelation so the Lord says grab hold of that by faith say yes Lord I want to be pregnant with vision I want to be pregnant with breakthrough and I want to give birth because there's a scripture in Isaiah it says that they didn't have strength to give birth and that joy will cause you to have that strength to birth so Lord we lose supernatural joy in Jesus name and so I just prophesied, even when she was praying that, I prophesied that there are entrepreneurs in this house and that those that are watching, I prophesy, Lord God, that new businesses are breaking forth and birthing out. Father, I prophesy that resources and finances are coming to this house and to those who are listening by ear and who will listen to this. I prophesy, Lord, that there are those who are, um, they see like that there's no way that there's a way out financially. I prophesy a turnaround. I prophesy that this is a time of multiplication, multiplication, multiplication. I prophesy, Lord God, that we will look and see what we have in our hand. And it just looks like one thing, but you're doubling it and you're tripling it and you're just turning it into um, baskets and baskets and baskets. And so, Father, I just decree and declare that that multiplication where it looks like there were only five loaves and two fishes or two fishes and five loaves. Father, I decree and declare multiplication where there looked like there was only for something for one day that you're going to multiply it for day after day after day after day and you're just going to continue to have and you're just going to continue to have. I decree and prophesy that the famine of the word is over. I decree that the famine of the word is over. God, we say we are hungry. We are hungry for your word, for your word. And we just decree, Lord God, that as we eat your word, as we eat your word, that the spirit of the Lord just comes out of us everywhere we go. Everywhere we go, your word heals the sick. Your word casts out demons. Your word raises the dead. Father, we decree and declare that we are a picture of your word in the earth. In Jesus' name.